Good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of uh, Epic India, the Tata Center for Development, and the University of Chicago, uh, welcome. Uh, I, I first of all want to thank our partners, Chintin and FES, uh, for putting together this fantastic conference. So I have uh, 15 minutes uh, just to talk a little bit about um, our motivation for, for working here in India and, and in the environmental sector. And uh, I would describe my organization, Epic India, as a group of environmental and energy economists who are motivated by what we call the global energy challenge. And that is uh, this question of how can we ensure uh, that people around the world have access to reliable, affordable energy needed for economic growth and human development without putting the environment, climate, and security at risk. And to that end, we've uh, <clears throat> launched a number of programs across the country um, many of which are applied uh, microeconomics research experiments, field experiments, um, and uh, in a number of different states. For instance, uh, we have uh, an ongoing project to develop India's first emissions trading scheme uh, in Gujarat. We have uh, a couple uh, information disclosure initiatives in which we are providing the public with information about which industries are polluting the most in their states, and we have uh, launched those programs already in Maharashtra and Odisha. Uh, in Bihar, we have some projects on uh, increasing energy access in, in rural areas. And I want to use the rest of my time in this slot to talk a little bit about one initiative that is ongoing, which is called uh, the Air Quality Life Index, the AQLI. In India, biggest problem that we face uh, today is air pollution. And across the world, uh, an estimated 5.5 billion people live uh, in areas that exceed the WHO standard for clean air. Now, the question that we think is important for everyone to think about when they think about air pollution is, what are the consequences of this air pollution on human health? Um, and uh, how should uh, citizens and policymakers evaluate the trade-offs? Uh, so I'm going to dive into a bit of a, a discussion on research and, and uh, try to um, introduce this, this, this concept of the AQLI to, to you today. Uh, but the way that we typically communicate risks regarding air pollution is through the AQI. And so for those of us who live in Delhi, this is the thing that we check on a day-to-day -day basis between uh, Diwali and Holi. Um, and we see the AQI telling us uh, that there are different colors that correspond to um, different levels of air quality. When the color is green, it means that the air is good. When it's maroon, it means that it's hazardous. And unfortunately, we see this color quite a bit here in, here in, here in India. But the problem with the AQI is that uh, we don't really know what these numbers mean. It's a composite index of different types of pollutants. We don't know what 100 means or 200 means or 300. And it doesn't really provide much information about the, the health concern except that uh, you know, maroon is, is hazardous. What we want to do is, is um, answer this question, what are the health consequences of air pollution? <clears throat> and this has been historically a very difficult question to answer. Uh, if you think about uh, what we can learn from data, we could you know, potentially go and collect information about levels of pollution, uh, levels of, of mortality, look at the correlation, but what we don't know is uh, is the pollution actually causing a decrease in, in life expectancy, right? So this is the shortcoming of the existing literature is that correlation is not a causation. Uh, there could be other factors in an environment that are uh, correlated with pollution and also uh, health, right? So if a, if a government is not very good at cleaning the air, they may also be not good at providing health care to the citizens. And so it's hard to isolate this causal effect. So what I'd like to show you is um, a study, described for you is a study in, that took place in China that isolates a causal effect between air pollution and life expectancy. And then I'll show you how that, this relates to India. Okay, so in China, uh, in the 1950 to 1980 period, <clears throat> there was a, a policy that the government introduced called the Huai River Heating Policy. Uh, and what this policy did was it provided free coal uh, to run uh, residential heating for all households that were north of the Huai River. And the Huai River 
sort of runs horizontally across the country. And so everyone on this side of the river had access to this free heating policy and everyone to the south did not. And what this policy essentially did was created the conditions for a natural experiment in which we could uh, study what the impact of, of air pollution might be. Now, in China, uh, many homes uh, use these boiler heaters. And so the subsidized coal was actually creating local pollution, right, in the form of particulates. And um, <clears throat> the other thing about the China case is that a uh, number of very rich data sources exist uh, through the China Disease Surveillance Point system. Um, and this data included very comprehensive records of uh, deaths, causes of death. And uh, the researchers who conducted the study could actually look at this data and isolate which deaths could be attributable to air pollution, which were not. Okay, so the idea here is that we are looking for a way to causally identify the impact of air pollution on health. And here's a natural experiment where everyone to the north through this policy had access to free coal and everyone to the south did not. The hypothesis is that the free coal created more pollution to the north compared to the south. And so when we zoom into the river and we look at the populations living just below and just above the river, these populations are observationally the same, right? There's nothing different about them. The only difference is that, is that one population was exposed to more air pollution because of a policy, right? And so there was a discontinuous jump in the pollution moving from the south to the north. And so the idea behind this econometric technique is to see if there's also a discontinuous fall in mortality as you move to the north. And that's how we could attribute uh, life expectancy to health. Okay, so that's the basic idea. And what we see indeed is that as you, so what this plot shows you is PM10 as you go from the south to the north. So these are degrees north of the Huai River boundary. So zero is the Huai River. Minus five is five degrees south, five is five degrees north. And what this plot shows you is that uh, there is indeed a discontinuous jump in the level of pollution just north of the Ohio River. And this is actually because of the policy that was introduced, this natural experiment. Okay, so uh, the first question that we had, did this policy create pollution, right? It, it did. The second point is, is there actually a difference in life expectancy as you move from the south to the north. And indeed, we see a discontinuous fall in uh, life expectancy just north of, of the border. And so what this natural experiment provides us is a, set, is, a, is a situation where we could actually isolate what the causal effect of pollution might be on health. And <clears throat> the, what we find is that roughly, um, I believe, a... 10 microgram increase in PM10 is associated with uh, 0.1 or so decrease uh, in, in life expectancy. Now, what can we do with this information? Well, this example came from China, right? China is, is uh, uh, you know, very special country for many reasons, but what the researchers have been able to do is identify this uh, causal effect, which has not been done in, in other studies. Now, the Air Quality Life Index is a tool that uh, my colleagues developed at, at Epic and at UChicago. And the idea is that we want to take uh, pollution readings from around the world and convert these into the projected effect on life expectancy in order to change the way people think about air pollution. Instead of thinking of air pollution as colors going from green to uh, red to, to maroon, we should be thinking about it as uh, what does sustained exposure to this level, level of air pollution mean for, for my life, for my, for my children's lives, etc. Et and um, fortunately what we have is satellites provide data on levels of air pollution across the world, right? So this is a, a, a map of the globe showing PM 2.5 in 2016, I think at one kilometer by one kilometer cells. And you see from here that, that the most polluted parts on the, on the planet are here in northern India and in eastern China. 
And when we zoom into India, we see that uh, uh, the average PM2.5 is 54 micrograms per cubic meter. And most of it is concentrated in this, uh, this area, this region just south of the Himalayas. And what we're going to do is take these estimates of air pollution uh, and then construct a counterfactual scenario where if we were to reduce this 54 to 10 micrograms per cubic meter, which is the WHO standard, what would this mean in terms of life expectancy savings based on this causal you know, research from China? Right? So that's, that's the, the idea be behind the AQLI. And when we do that, we find that in India on average, if levels of air pollution were reduced to 10 micrograms per cubic meter, people would live 4.3 years longer, right? So we're extrapolating the results of this China natural experiment to India. I mean, there may be some issues with this type of extrapolation, but what the research suggests is that there are potentially these huge savings to lives uh, by investing in, in policies that reduce air pollution. And this is a website that's available online. And the, the interesting thing here is you can actually zoom in to different parts of the world. So this is uh, the state of Jharkhand. You could zoom in here and you could see um, actually how air pollution has changed over time. So this is 2000, this is 2010, this is 2016. In fact, the average air pollution in Jharkhand is sort of like the national average, it's 55. Um, and here in this state, uh, you know, citizens would gain 4.4 years if air pollution was reduced to 10 micrograms per cubic meter. And uh, so this is kind of a, a demo of the, of the website. But uh, what the AQLI provides us with is a new vocabulary to talk about air pollution. Instead of talking about air pollution in terms of AQI and in terms of levels that may not mean much to many people, we should think of it as uh, in terms of impact on health, um, since this is ultimately why air pollution is a problem. So this is what I want to show you. Thank you for, uh, for your time, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the discussion today.